Okay, so welcome to our senior parent night for our senior college and career readiness presentation. We have lots and lots of information for you guys tonight. What I'm going to go over is a lot of general information. We have lots of links embedded into the presentation to give you guys access to more information. I am going to be referencing more webinars um, that will have more information for financial aid a little later on. So keep in mind, this is the basic stuff we need our families to know, and then it will be continual resources uh, between links and other webinar opportunities. So again, guys, we are recording. I have disabled everybody's microphone. So if you have questions, you can go ahead and put them into the chat and our other counselors are going to be monitoring the questions that we have in the chat. Tonight, this is a new platform for us. The district opened up the ability for us to have a webinar without you guys actually having to have a Teams account. So we're, we're piloting this for them. Um, so we're crossing our fingers that everything goes well because they do want our feedback to see what else we need to work on. So I will introduce myself. So I'm Susan Terriel. I'm one of the counselors. My alphabet is last names G-O-N through O. And we have Angelina Sim, who is the counselor for last names A through G-O-M. We have Mr. Juan Gonzalez, who is our new counselor. We're very, very, very excited and very grateful to have him. His last name is going to be from P through Z. And then we have Ms. Jessica Munoz, who has many of our supplemental programs. She has AVID and CARE and EL and FOSTER and our migrant program. So our emails are there for you guys if you need to contact us. Before we go too much into the presentation, I want to review the ways that we communicate with you. A lot of how we communicate with our students and our parents are through email. Um, we also have the East Union website. Um, if you go to the East Union website and click on the counseling tab, it gives you a whole list of things, but I'm gonna take you guys through that a little later tonight so that you can actually see everything that's there. And then Parent Connect is also how you can get connected to what your students are doing in school. The first thing we're going to talk about tonight is going to be the high school graduation versus the A to G requirements. We've talked to the we've talked to you guys about this in the past. We always want to review. So if you're viewing this on a cell phone, this is going to be very small. If you're on a PC, you're going to um, be able to see it better. But all of this does need to be side by side. So I apologize for how much information is on this slide. I'm, I'm kind of seeing feedback that slides aren't moving. Are you guys not able to see the slides that are coming up? Okay, I'm just gonna pause here because we're getting feedback. Okay, so we're a little hit and miss with who's getting to see the slides and who isn't. Thank you for that feedback, I appreciate it. Guys, if you can't see the slides, it's okay. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's okay. The presentation is being recorded and the PowerPoint with all the links will also be emailed to you guys. So if you can at least listen and jot down any notes you have, we will be able to get the visual presentation to you. Okay, so the high school graduation versus the A to G requirements. Every single kid on our campus needs to meet the high school graduation requirements in order to earn a diploma. So we have the four years of English, we have one year of life science, one year of physical science, at least three years of math, um, at least completing the algebra one requirement, a semester of health, 
one year of world history, one year of US history, government and econ, which get sandwiched together. Those are semester classes, just like Success 101 in health work. And one year of a fine art or a foreign language, at least two years of PE. Many of our kids have more than that. And then anything outside of those classes goes into the elective credit bank and the kids end up earning, um, you know, at least 120 credits. Then you, we have the A to G requirements. So these are the requirements the kids need to meet if they're looking at going straight to a four-year college right after high school. Four years of English, two years of a laboratory science. So we're looking at um, biology, or now it's called the living earth, and chemistry, which is now called chemistry and earth systems. If they can do more than the minimal two classes, that would be great because we always encourage kids to go above and beyond. They need to have the three years of math, they need to do algebra one, geometry, get to the level of at least algebra two. We really want to see them go beyond that. You know, math your senior year is super important. The A to G requirements are two years of history. The kids are covered there because we require three. But here's the big difference between high school graduation and A to G is that for A to G, the kids have to have at least one year of a visual performing art in addition to at least two years of a world language and it does need to be the same world language and then the one year college prep elective i have yet to come across a kid who does not have that because so many of our classes are college prep elective classes so next i'm going to ask you guys to do something scary i want you guys to fast forward students think about five to seven years from now, parents think about, you know, five to seven years when your kids are, you know, grown and flown. What do the students want to wake up every day and do? This can be a really big question for them. It can be kind of stressful. Some of the kids have an idea of what they want to do. Some kids feel very lost. We don't expect them to know what they want to do right now for the rest of their lives. We want them to have an idea though. We want them to start exploring and giving themselves exposure. <clears throat> um, we do have college and career presentations available on campus. One of our counselors, Ms. Sim, she coordinates that. So anytime a student has the opportunity to go learn something about a college or a career, we would encourage them to sign up for those classes. Back in um, Success 101, most of the students took some kind of career interest inventory. A lot of them haven't done that, you know, since Success 101. So if they're kind of struggling with what they want to do or they thought they knew and now they're unsure, these are two really great resources. And when you guys get the PowerPoint, you're going to just be able to click on, um, on these white boxes. So California Career Zone has a great interest inventory and CaliforniaColleges.edu does as well. Um, very comprehensive, you know, allows the kids to start exploring more into what they want to do, what they need to do to get there. So what we like the kids to do is we like to have them start at the top. We like to have them think, you know, that five to seven years down the road, what's that career goal that they have? What do they want to wake up every morning and do? And then we work backwards. Think about, okay, for this particular career, what kind of major do I need to have? Or what kind of specialty do I need to have? And then what kind of education or training do I need for that major or specialty? And that leads the kids into, where am I going to go for my post high school education? And for post high school options, the kids have five choices. They have a four year college or university, they have a two-year community college, and you could always do the two years at the community college and then transfer to the four-year. There's trade schools and tech schools, there's the military, or there's the workforce. Those are the five options kids have. So what we want them to do is think career, then major specialty, then what kind of education and training I need, which leads them to the post high school option that is going to be what they need to get to that main career goal. And for some of the kids, it's going to be a combination of these things. And that's one of the things we want them to be talking to you about. That's what we want to be able to talk to them about also.
So as you guys are having this conversation and thinking, okay, where do I need to go to get this education? We want you to make a list. Now, this slide says college search. For all intents and purposes, when I say college right now, what I want you guys to think of is any post high school education, whether it is a four year college, a junior college, or some kind of trade or technological school. So first, you know, we want the kids to make a list of the career interest and then, you know, use information from the career searches they've done to find where can I get the education I need for this interest. Read up on the top 10 questions to guide you to the perfect college. Um, some of those questions will apply to like trade and tech schools, some won't necessarily, but it's still asking questions so that you have a better understanding of what the educational institution is going to offer for you. And then based off of what you find, create a list of potential colleges, universities, trade schools that your kids are interested in, and then explore those further. So when you're looking at the schools for after high school, um, this really plays into when you're looking at the four years. Um, the career and technical schools may or may not be just depending on how competitive they are. So, you know, have that dream school, have that good chance that I can get in school, have that school you know that's a sure bet, and have that community college as your backup. Now, when we look at this, for some of our kids, that community college, that's gonna be the number one because that's where they need to start or per conversations with parents and finances, that's where they need to start. So you have to tailor this to what your student is looking at. Um, we would encourage to have a list of at least three to five schools, um, but depending on what you're doing and the individual plan for the kid, it might, it might be more or it might be less. That's gonna be very much up to you guys as a family. The next thing we want to cover are transcripts. So as of Friday and today, we've seen just about all of the seniors on campus, unless they weren't here one of those days, we've given them a copy of their transcripts and we've, we've reviewed a lot of this information with them. So here are some things that parents and students need to be aware of with transcripts. We always encourage the kids to keep a current transcript on file somewhere with them. If, you know, if you guys have a folder or some kind of notebook that you've just been stuffing everything in all throughout high school. Um, also understand how to interpret your transcript and that's something that we've gone over with the kids over the years. If ever they have questions or you have questions about that, definitely ask us. And then if you're looking to meet all of the A to G requirements, make sure that you've remediated any D's or F's in those. And then when you're looking at graduation requirements, we want to make sure we've cleaned up any F's. So if you are, if you have any concerns or questions about that, definitely reaching out to your counselor is good. Now, this is something new. We did do it last year with our seniors. An email was sent out to the kids last week about creating a parchment account. Parchment is the program that each union is using to send official transcripts. Through the parchment account, kids can also view their unofficial transcripts. So if you ask your kid, hey, let me see your transcript that your counselor gave you that you're that I know you brought home to me, right? That looks different than what you guys can see in Parent Connect. And Parent Connect is just a list. When you have the actual tangible transcript, it breaks things down by term, by semester, and gives a running GPA, and it has all the GPAs and the work in progress classes and um, a summary of the graduation requirements. So that actual transcript looks different than just the list of things you guys see in Student Connect and Parent Connect. So you will have access to that actual unofficial transcript in the parchment account. Kids get four free sends. So they can send a transcript four times through the parchment account. After the fourth time, there is a fee. I don't know what the fee is this year. Um, I, I will get back to you guys on that. So if you've got students applying to any kind of school after high school and they're requesting an official transcript, your student can log into their parchment account and have it sent officially through the parchment account. 
be aware of different schools transcript deadlines. Each school will have their own deadline that they want um, the transcripts by. Some schools may ask for one, um, you know, by February and then wherever your kids are actually going to commit to, you'll need to send a final transcript. The final transcript is the student's responsibility to request. And the final transcript request needs to be done through parchment by June 13th. If they request it after June 13th, our registrar who sends the transcript through parchment will not be here. So please, 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 as soon as the kids have committed to a school, they can go into their parchment account and request that that final transcript be sent. And if they are unsure, please have them check with their counselor. Um, something I will encourage you to have the kids do, and kids, if you guys are listening to, when you set up your parchment account, don't use your student email. Use your own personal professional email because once you graduate from each student, that email will eventually be cut off. And parchment is something that you guys can access even after you graduate. So, you know, a year after you graduate, if you need your official transcript for some reason, you can actually get into your parchment account and have a transcript sent. So don't use your East Union email, use your own personal email for that. Okay, the next one's a big one, financial aid. I will be giving you guys a brief overview of financial aid. I will be referencing many different webinar opportunities that we have through Delta College for more specific detailed financial aid information. It is more than I could possibly give you guys tonight without heads exploding. So I will encourage you guys to link into those other webinars. We will have some through East Union. Delta will be running um, some just through their own campus and everybody is welcome to those. So my first question for everybody is going to be, have you had the money talk with your kids? Kids, have you had the money talk with your parents? If you haven't started talking about how you're going to fund your post high school education, start having that conversation now. There's nothing like waiting until May to spring on your parents what you need to send the college or what you need to send your trade school or, or your community college. It's it's just a mess if you wait till the end. So please start having that conversation now. Um, you know, teaching our kids about money and the management of money is so, so, so important. Those are life skills that they really carry with them. Please start having that conversation now. So my first point for this financial aid talk that I'm going to have with you guys tonight is that the 22-23 FAFSA and CATA applications open October 1st. Please don't try to fill it out before October 1st because you will be filling it out for the wrong academic year. 2020, I'm sorry, 2022-2023 would be the school year that your kids are going to actually start their post high school educations. So that is the year you would be filling out the FAFSA and the CATA application for. Everyone should fill it out no matter how much you make or you don't make. All of our families should be filling it out. Um, so the, the FAFSA is the free application for federal student aid and then the CATA is the California Dream Act application. Again, everybody should be filling one or the other out. It will require your 2020 tax return. Um, I know many of us have a different financial situation now than we did in 2020. So in that case, what you will want to do is you fill out the FAFSA according to your 2020 tax return. And then when your students are applying to the schools, um, you, you want to have a one on one conversation with that institution's financial aid office. Now the FAFSA is open, the FAFSA and CATA are open from October 1st to March 2nd. It's a huge gap of time to get it done. We really, really, really encourage the kids to get it done sooner rather than later. We don't want you guys waiting until March 1st, just in case we run into a little bit of a glitch and you're having a hard time getting the information. I do advise checking the individual institutions that the kids are applying to just in case 
they want the FAFSA in earlier than March 2nd. So a couple important things when it comes to the FAFSA and CADA. The district automatically sends the kids GPA verification, which is great because that's less paperwork for the kids to worry about the counselors getting filled out, to worry about getting submitted. So the district automatically sends that GPA verification. It is very important when you guys fill out the FAFSA to make sure that your student's name is the same name that is reported to the school district. Otherwise, there's a disconnect when it comes to the GPA verification being sent in. And then when students fill out the FAFSA and the CATA, they can list up to 10 schools. So if the kids are still kind of mulling around, you know, okay, I'm not 100% sure what schools I'm going to apply to, they have the opportunity to list 10. Now, if they fill it out and list 10 schools and then come back later and say, oh no, you know, I, I applied to an extra school, I didn't put on the FAFSA application, that's okay because they can come back in and edit those schools and resend it. So this is one of those extra webinars that I was talking about. Delta has always been great for our school, for our families with financial aid. They do a number of different workshops now. Um, they used to do just the cash for college with us, which is where all our families could come in and about the FAFSA application. Now they have multiple workshops because they're able to do it through webinars and reach more families. So let me, get, let me find my little, my little pen here. Okay, hopefully you guys can see me doing this. This one right here, this financial aid 101, I highly recommend because it's going to give more detailed specific information about the FAFSA and about grants than I'm going to be able to provide you guys tonight. So we have the English version right here. And then we also have a number of these workshops in Spanish. Um, so, you know, look at the dates to see, you know, mark it, on the, mark it on your calendar. These flyers have been sent to all of our parents' emails. They've been sent to our students' emails. They're on the East Union website. I will be sending them multiple times because it's so important that you guys have access to this information. Um, if you can't make these nights, that's okay because Delta will still do other workshops just in general for any families and I'll be sending out that flyer to you guys too. They have a bunch that they're doing for the month of September. They haven't given us their October schedule yet, but they'll be having them every month, you know, through February. So you guys will have lots and lots and lots of opportunities. So I recommend the Financial Aid 101 because it's going to give you a lot more detailed information. And then I also highly recommend um, this the cash for college night here and here because those two nights the delta representatives will actually walk you through filling out the fafsa application um, if you run into a glitch then they can take you into a breakout room and help you figure it out and so we have two nights for us one in english one in spanish and then we're also going to have another set of nights um, in february just to catch anybody else who hasn't gotten to get it filled out because it's so important to us that all of our families are able to fill out these financial aid applications and get squared away. So again, I will be sending out that flyer again and I will be sending out the flyer that Delta has for um, their other dates as well. These dates right here, they are just specific to East Union kids. So next up we have, we've got four sources of financial aid. So we have scholarships, we have grants, we have work study, and we have loans. So we're briefly going to go through some of these for you guys. So scholarships are free money that you don't have to pay back. However, scholarships take time. It does take time to find the scholarships, to fill out the application, maybe do the essay, collect the letters of recommendation. So it's free money, you don't have to pay back, but it does cost your time. And the scholarships are awarded for academic, for athletic, um, community involvement, um, 
maybe some other awards. There are lots of reasons um, for scholarships, and they're available through numerous sources. So through East Union, through any college or trade school that's specific that your student is going to. Um, parents, if you're a part of any union, definitely check with your union to see if they have a scholarship. And then just your place of employment in general. Check to see if your work has a scholarship. I know um, a couple of years ago, we had a young lady uh, whose father was part of a union and she ended up with a $14,000 scholarship from that union. And I mean, that's huge and I've only seen it that one time, um, but that was pretty incredible. I know that uh, if, you're, if you're a teacher in a district, more than likely your teacher's union has a scholarship too. And, you know, check with, check with your workplace check with your unions to see if there are any scholarships available through them. These are some scholarship websites if you want to just do general scholarship searches. So there's FastWeb and there's RaiseMe. Um, the East Union website, any scholarships that I get, because I'm the scholarship person for our school, any scholarships that I get, I email to the students. We email to the parents and then we also post on the East Union website and at the end of this too I will show you guys the website I'm kind of afraid to click on anything right now because I don't want to disrupt the live presentation that's happening but I'll, I'll get out of this and I'll show you guys the website so you know um, where everything is I've talked to the seniors a couple times about the local scholarship application so this is an application that we ask that our seniors do that stays housed at East Union. We get a number of community members asking about our kids. Mr. Mora comes to us all the time and asks about certain students. And we want to be able to share more about the kids than what's on their transcript. Any of us can pull up a kid's transcript and say, oh yeah, this kid is a, you know, this kid is a great student. You know, they, this is what they've worked through since being at East Union. But the organizations that give scholarships, they want to give it to the kids for being individuals, not necessarily just because they got good grades. So what this local scholarship application does is it asks the kids, okay, what have you been involved in in high school? What are you looking at doing after high school? They do a personal statement about themselves and they get at least one letter of recommendation. That way, when we have the community asking about our kids, when Mr. Mora wants to know something about someone, we're able to say, hey, check out this kid, look at their story. And their story and who they are as individuals is really, really, really important. And we wanna be able to share that. So having the kids do this local scholarship application is very important to us in the counseling office. It does give them a basic foundation for filling out other scholarships because what we ask on our scholarship application is going to be able to be regurgitated and used for many other scholarship applications as well. The local scholarship application, and I realize I didn't put it on this slide, is due to me, Mrs. Terriel, a hard copy by December 3rd, because as soon as we get back from our Christmas break, people start asking about kids. So I need to be able to have that information to share and advocate for our kids. So with that local scholarship application, you guys probably saw that we require at least one letter of recommendation. This is something the kids need to jump on now. Some college applications will ask for letters of recommendation. The majority of scholarships will ask for letters of recommendation. We want the kids to have at least one. If they have more than that, we will gladly take them, um, but at least one. Many other scholarships will ask for two or more, so that's something to bear in mind. One of the things with the letters of recommendation is whoever they're asking to write the letter for them, that person really needs at least two weeks notice. And we need the kids to give them some kind of resume so that they have an outline to work on. Because a teacher might know the kid in their specific class, but not realize all the other things that student does. And so to write a good comprehensive letter of recommendation, we want to know, OK, this is my experience with the student that I can put into this letter. But I also need to be reminded of all the other things this kid does so I can speak to that, too. It's very important because we like to really encompass the whole student when we're writing a letter of recommendation. 
so okay back to financial aid stuff we, we went over scholarship information now we want to talk about grants and work study and grants and work study they're both available through fafsa the grants are money you don't have to pay back and work study is college employment that help offset some of those educational expenses and specific information about this will be answered and given in that Delta Financial Aid 101 webinar that we have with East Union next Monday at 5.30. And then again, I'll get you guys the information for Delta's other dates for that. Um, but that's a really good one to listen to because there's just a lot of information about that that's good for you guys. This is a little bit of the breakdown for Cal Grants. So for Cal Grant A, kids have to have a minimum GPA of a 3.0 and that money would go towards helping to pay for tuition and fees. Cal Grant B, a minimum of a 2.0 GPA, and then Cal Grant C, there's no minimum GPA and that can assist um, with the trade or the technical schools. Um, you must fill out the FAFSA to qualify for these grants, and you do need to list a California school on your FAFSA application to qualify um, for any of the Cal Grants. And again, with the Cal Grant, there are income ceilings for each of these that are broken down. That is something specific that would be included in that Financial Aid 101 webinar that Delta is offering, which again is why I highly recommend you guys get the chance to listen to that. Um, for more information about Cal Grants, you guys can click right here once you get the PowerPoint from us, and that will take you to the CSAG website and give you lots of other information about Cal Grants too. It's just so much for us to cover here. Um, so we want to give you guys the resources so you can really look at it and see for yourselves too. All right, now loans. Okay, the word loan can very much be a four letter word for some families. I feel safe to say that the majority of us who are adults have had some kind of loan, whether it's a car, a home, um, a student loan of some kind. Loans can be a touchy subject for families, and it is extremely important that this be a family conversation. Our students need to understand the impact loans can have, um, you know, on financial futures. Very, very serious financial conversation that has to happen. I know that for me, Personally, I would not have been able to get my education without loans. Paying them back was not my favorite thing of the work in the world, um, but I would not have had my education without loans. But please, guys, if loans are something that you're going to be looking at to fund your post high school education, that needs to be a family conversation, and you really need to map it out and create a financial plan for yourselves. So with the loans, that's borrowed money that has to be paid back most of the time with interest. So they come from the government, from the federal and state levels. You can get them um, through personal banks and credit unions. Individual colleges may have loans. So as you are mapping out your financial plan to fund your post high school education, loans will probably come up. When, when the kids get their financial aid award letters from schools, you know, there might be some grant information, there might be some scholarship, but then they'll also include loans. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about the financial aid award letter in just a minute. Um, but this is one of those things to really, really talk about. So the next piece we're going to go over are college applications. Junior colleges, state colleges, UCs, private out-of-state colleges. I wanna just review some of the things for everybody to keep in mind with the applications. Before I get into the specific applications though, something that's important for everybody to be updated on is the SAT and the ACT. So because of the impact of COVID, many of our students were not able to take the SAT or the ACT as juniors. The colleges know this. Um, closures have happened. Not all kids had access. Many schools, are test optional this year, which means that the kids do not have to have the SAT or the ACT to be admitted to a college. But you need to check with each school. We sat in a UC conference last week and the UC said, 
We are not looking at the SAT or ACT period end of discussion. The kids can take it, they can send the score, that's fine, but we are not looking at it. We're waiting to see what the CSU say. We have um, our counselor conference with them next week. Um, I, my guess is they'll say something along the same lines, but I ask that you guys all check the schools you're looking at applying to to see if they're test optional, if they're test optional for admission, is the SAT or ACT, you know, bearing any impact on scholarship opportunities or math or English placement. So while it may not be used for admissions purposes, is it being used for something else? So um, the UCs have said, we don't want the kids to worry about the SAT or ACT. Instead of studying for that, we want them to take the time and do a really, really great job on their applications. So it's just so important to check each individual school that you're looking at. Um, so if, if you've got questions, call those schools. Don't ever hesitate to call any of the schools that you guys are applying to. They're always happy to talk to the applicants. If students are interested in taking the SAT, the dates are October 2nd, November 6th, and December 4th. Traditionally, schools wouldn't take scores after that December test. But because this is kind of a wonky year with the requirement for the SAT or ACT, that would be something to check for on each individual institution. And when you guys get this, if you click SAT right here, it will take you to College Board if your student does want to sign up for the SAT. And a note about the SAT, if you guys have had kids um, who have already come through high school and have taken the SAT, the SAT no longer has the essay. Previously, um, students could register to take the SAT with or without the essay portion. They've done away with the essay portion, so that's not even an option for the kids anymore. And then there are also no more subject tests for the SAT. Next is the ACT. So the dates for that would be October 23rd and November 11th. And if you guys click right here, then it will take you to the SAT.org website. If the kids are looking at helpful test prep for either of the tests, Khan Academy is great for the SAT. And then ACT.org has some free test prep on their site also. Okay, now we're gonna dive into college applications. So for the community colleges, um, the application time, I mean, the kids can apply now if they want to. What I would recommend is if the kids are going to Delta or MJC, hold off on applying. Don't apply quite yet because Delta and MJC partner with East Union and they will come and do registration sessions with our kids. They'll get them registered, they'll do their orientation, and they'll give them the opportunity to meet and plan with one of the junior college counselors. If the kids are looking at going to a junior college outside of MJC or Delta, um, then they're they're a little bit more on their own when it comes to registering. So to register, the kids are going to go to this um, cccapply.org, and this link right here will take the kids to the junior college website to start creating an account and um, applying to whatever um, community college they're looking at. Know that the kids have to be at least 18 or have a high school diploma to enroll in a junior college. And some junior colleges do have a dorming situation or residence halls. I know that Columbia up in Sonora has a residence hall for the kids. Um, there are a number of community colleges that have residence halls, so you guys can click on this link too, and that will give you a list of the junior colleges that have residence halls. Um, for some of our kids who are looking to start at a junior college and then transfer to a four-year college to finish earning a degree, they will want to talk to their junior college counselor about the transfer agreement guarantee. Next up, we have the California State Universities, or the CSUs. So these applications open October 1st, and they close November 30th. You could click on this Cal State Apply link right here, and that will take you directly to their application site. 
Um, that application is not open yet for the kids to start working on. It's not going to be available until October 1st. Um, we don't have this year's updated information for the CSUs because their counselor conference isn't until next week. So if there's any change um, that we hear from them, I will be pushing that my, myself or one of the counselors will be pushing that information out to students and parents. So a couple of the highlights to keep in mind for the CSUs is that it's $70 per campus. The fee waiver eligibility is built into the application. So there's a section of the application where you fill out personal information and you um, you supply your parents' income and a couple other things about yourself and the CSU application will figure out if you are eligible for a fee waiver. You definitely have to satisfy the A to G requirements to attend a CSU and their bare minimum GPA to apply is a 2.0. That minimum GPA could vary depending on the campus. Um, and again, the CSUs, as far as we know at this point, are test optional. The CSUs will be giving us more specific information on, you know, if the kids do take the SAT, is that going to be looked at in any way, shape, or form for things other than admission? So we will be giving you guys that new information once we get it. Then we have the University of California Schools, or the UC. So their submission period is November 1st to November 30th. However, their application is open now to start working on. The kids just can't submit it until November 1st. Um, this admissions uh, at the University of California website is incredibly helpful. There's so much information for the kids um, on that website when it comes to filling out the application. Because if you look down here, the kids are going to have to answer at least four out of eight personal insight questions. and this website has such good advice on how best to answer those personal insight questions to get the most out of it. The UCs are $70 per campus and their fee waiver is also built into the application. You do have to satisfy the A to G requirements and their minimum GPA is a 3.0, but again, that could vary by school. Then we're going to look at private or independent colleges, universities, and out-of-state schools. Their application deadlines and fees will vary by school, so it's always important. I know I've said it multiple times. It's always important to be checking the deadlines for each school that you're looking to apply to. Many of the private and independent universities use the Common App so that you're not having to fill out the same application information five different times. You can fill it out one time in the Common App and just do the separate essays um, or personal statements for each school that you're applying to. And then you have to have the A to G coursework. Many of these schools will ask for some kind of personal statement or essay question. Um, a number of them will ask for letters of recommendation. If kids are looking to go out of state, get the heck out of California, they want to go on an adventure and try something new, there's the Western Undergraduate Exchange, which is called the WUI. So it's this chunk of schools in the Western United States that have gotten together and said, you know, hey, let's swap kids. Let's get some, you know, diversity about where people are coming from. So with the WUI, if your student qualifies for the WUI based on their GPA, um, you can pay 150% of in-state tuition. So my example of this is my husband and I both went to the University of Hawaii, Hilo. And because that's a school that's part of the WUI program, instead of paying crazy, insane out-of-state tuition, we paid 150% of in-state tuition, which made it extremely affordable for us to be able to go there. So if you guys are looking at out-of-state, you can click on this link right here, and it will give you a big long list of all the WUI schools that participate in that program. So something important to keep in mind, whether you're looking at a junior college, whether you're looking at a four-year college. These colleges use their school portals for communication. So what will happen is when you register for a junior college or when you apply to a four-year college, they will generate an email to the student asking them to set up 
some kind of school portal and everybody kind of calls their school portal their own special thing. That is where the school is going to communicate with your student. So if your student applies to multiple schools, they're going to have multiple school portals. And it is very, very, very important for them to be checking these portals on a regular basis to make sure they are doing anything and everything in their to-do list. Also, as the kids are applying to schools this fall, you want to be checking each one of those schools for any specific scholarships that that institution has. The kids have until May 1st to decide where they're actually going to accept. And when the kids start getting their acceptances, you know, it could be as early as December into March. You're going to get these financial aid award letters. Read them carefully. Earlier, I mentioned that when you get these letters, you're going to see, you know, potentially grants, scholarships and loans. Read the letters line by line very carefully to make sure you completely understand what your student is being offered and then the total cost of um, the tuition, any room and any board. If it doesn't make sense to you, you know, bring it into your counselor. We can help you go through it. Definitely call the institution you guys are looking at and talk to their financial aid office for any clarification. And every semester matters every semester matters you know if we have a student who's in english four in term two and their very their second semester grade is a d that disqualifies them from a four-year school so their application to a four-year school could be rescinded even though they had initially been accepted so every semester matters for these guys Okay, lastly, before we get into any questions you guys have, if your student is interested in playing sports in college, they're going to need to look at the NAIA Eligibility Center or the NCAA Eligibility Center. And that is something that, um, you know, they can come to us and say, hey, what do I need to do? Um, you know, we want to have that discussion of making sure they're covered with sports. A lot of them have talked to their coaches already and have an idea, which is fantastic. Um, but we want to make sure we as counselors have things set for them on, on our end too. So over the next couple weeks, beginning on Thursday, we are going to be having one-on-one -on -one senior meetings with the kids. We don't have a whole lot of time with them, um, so we want them to come prepared to these meetings with any questions that they have so we can be as efficient as possible and help them as much as possible um, with their plan for after high school. So just letting you guys know those are going to start September 16th. If your student gets quarantined, please have them email their counselor right away. Because if they're quarantined, we can meet with them through Teams and we can still get things taken care of and we can still make sure they're getting supported. Okay, so counselors, any questions that are coming up in the chat? I think you guys can unmic yourselves and talk. Any questions, guys? Parents are asking if we have dates for Delta College. OK, we don't have dates for Delta yet. Um, Angie, can you tell us what the dates were for MJC? Yes, so um, I type on in the chat. We have MJC application workshop and orientation scheduled for January 21st. Um, they are um, coming to EU campus that day. Okay. They can sign up with Joanne in the counseling office. Um, it's either first period at nine o'clock or second period at 1045. Okay, and then we're still waiting on Delta. That is correct. Okay. There was one question about um, SAT and ACTs. If the, the test is available, should the student take it? So that all depends on the school they're planning to attend, but it also helps with certain scholarships out there. Yeah. And feel like need it. 
Yeah, and so here's here's the thing with the SAT and the ACT. Many schools are saying the kids do not have to have it for admission purposes. Some schools are saying the kids don't need to have it period for anything. Other schools are saying, hey, they don't need it for admission purposes, but it can be used for potential scholarship, um, potential scholarship qualifications or placement when it comes to a math and English class. So if you have a student who is wanting to take the SAT or the ACT, we absolutely will not discourage them from taking that. If they're free and reduced lunch, then we have um, fee waivers available so that they don't have to pay for the test. And also someone asked the question about the local scholarship where it's kept at the school. So Mrs. Terrell is in charge. I'll let her answer that. OK, perfect. So it, it did get emailed to the kids a couple weeks ago, and then I will show you guys the website. So just give me a minute to navigate through here. OK, so hopefully this has gone through and you guys can see this. So we're at the East Union website. So if you go to the counseling tab, it has a drop down menu. You can go to scholarships. And it will take you to the scholarship page. So right now scholarships are super slow. We don't really have anything in. It will pick up as we move into December, get really heavy in January, February, March. So this right here is the local scholarship application that I was talking about. So please read the directions on the front page. And then this is the actual application and the personal statement prompt for the kids. So you can always find it on the website and then it has been emailed to the students. And just like with those financial aid flyers, this is one of those things that's going to be emailed regularly um, because we want to make sure as many kids as possible are getting access to that. As we get more scholarships in, you guys will be able to click through these tabs right here to see when things are due. So remember, they're going to be emailed to the students, they're going to be emailed to the parents, and then they will be posted here on the East Union website. And since we're here, the other thing I wanted to share, so if you go back and um, float over the counseling tab, you can go down to senior plans. And this is where we have more information for our students and our families. So we have a two year college um, trade school timeline for kids to follow to make sure they're taking care of everything they need to be doing. We have the four year. And I have one um, sitting in my Microsoft folder right now. We want to update some of these links because some of these links have changed. So that should be updated in the next day or so. We have our financial aid tab that's going to give you um, the financial aid flyers and information are going to be here. This is the new one for this year, so you guys can click on these links to join. It also gives you all the information for everything that you need to make sure you have when filling out the FAFSA application. Um, here's some information or letters of recommendation. Um, this is really useful um, just to kind of have when you're looking at asking people for letters of recommendation. I'm going to go back to this four-year college tab. If you scroll down under this timeline, um, there are lots of links right here that will be very helpful when you guys are planning what schools you're going to apply to. There are application tracker worksheets. Um, the college entrance exam information we left here for you guys, just at least just to have it. Um, the college essay, this is this is a very helpful ditto um, that we'll pull up for you guys to see that helps with writing any kind of personal statement. So there's lots of information here for our families.
what other questions, guys, are we having? I don't see any other questions. I think that was it. Okay. Parents, thank you so much for logging in with us tonight. We really appreciate it. We'll have a recording um, available here in the next couple days, and we'll also be sending out the PowerPoint to you guys as well. Is there a personal statement help on campus? Um, we are always more than happy to read the kids' personal statements. We um, would also recommend having their English teachers, you know, past or present, look at the personal statements as well. Okay, guys. Okay, who just asked, can you answer my question? Who, what was the question? Was it about the, um, the SAT fee waivers? Okay, okay, I see, I see. Um, yes, the fee waiver is good for two tests and it's a code that we're able to give the kids and then they use that code to um, put in when they're registering where, when they get to the point where it's time to pay. So um, if the kids have free or reduced lunch, then they should be eligible for those SAT fee waivers. Okay, guys, thank you so much for logging in. We really appreciate it. And we will get to see you guys soon.